Hello everyone, my name is Yasin and today I'll present the Confluence tool from the Atlassian company for you. So in the last videos, we presented the Atlassian as a company and its products, as well as the Jira platform. And this time we will go through the Confluence tool and its functionalities. So what is Confluence? Confluence is a web-based platform. You can use it using your browser. You don't have to install any other tools. And basically in Confluence, you can store your documentation about a certain product, about your processes, your department, your company, as well as your project. And in this platform, users can work together very easily. So instead of documenting um, everything using Word or Excel, and and in different places and in different servers using Confluence, you gather everyone in a central place um, in Confluence like that, you improve the collaboration between them and that will definitely improve their quality. Confluence, um, as said, is a documentation system and it's based on pages. So each time you would like to create a documentation, you will have to create a page. A page belongs basically to a space. So a space you can compare it in Jira to a project. So for example, we'll have a space for product A, another space for product B. Users in the system can have access to one or many spaces and a space can have, of course, multiple pages. But a space at the creation time it will have at least one page and that page we'll call it home page. So it's the landing page of the space and it's called the first parent page of the space. Under the home page, you can create multiple pages and under those pages, you can create sub pages. So that is kind of the structure of Confluence. You have a space and it has basically at least one page, which is called the home page. And beneath that page, you have uh, multiple pages. So we have basically in Confluence two type of users. You have those who are the basic users who can create documentation, work on pages, and you have other users, which we call admin users. You don't have in Confluence a lot of administration tasks, but it's probably nice to have at least one person who's responsible for the configuration of your space. So a page can contain attachments. So for example, you will create a page where you can upload your Word documents or PowerPoint presentation, or as well your PDF document. So when we talk about pages in spaces and confluence, we talk as well about blogs. Pages and blogs are identical, except that blogs can be used to spread some sort of special news. So you will, for example, create weekly a blog. It's like a newsletter, which will appear in some places within your space or within your Confluence site. And in pages, you create basically your normal documentation. Page or blog can contain, of course, text, pictures, videos, documents with different types. Content in Confluence pages or blogs can be generated manually by just writing your content or it can be generated automatically. For example, you would connect your Confluence with your Jira and you would show a report about the uh, issues which are in progress. And for that automation, you would use macros. So macros are, would say compared to Excel macros, so they can calculate some stuff and generate data and just show it. And as just mentioned, you can get the content from Confluence, so you save it in Confluence, or you can get content uh, from other tools like Jira, um, Bamboo, Bitbucket, or any other tool. In Confluence, pages can be created as blank pages, so empty pages, or you can prepare a sort of a template, for example, a template for meetings or a template for a certain type of retro perspective meetings for your sprints. And to set up those templates, we use in Confluence two uh, technical keywords. You have templates, which are basic templates, and you have blueprints, which are a bit of advanced um, templates. Within those blueprints, you can program some sort of magical stuff and automate some tasks while creating the page. So as we said, you can restrict the permission of a certain space saying that only those users can access the space. But within that space, you can as well restrict um, access to certain users. So you would say, I would like only these three users to have access to this page A. And all the other pages which will be created under that page A will be only visible for those three users that you mentioned in the configuration. As any other tool, pages can be copied, can be moved, and can as well be deleted. 
But notice that deleting a page in Confluence is called a soft delete. So if you delete a page, it won't be deleted from the system. And your space administrator will take care of those soft deleted pages, and he will decide if the page should be permanently deleted from your space or should be, for example, restored. So if an admin deletes a page permanently, we talk about hard delete. So since pages in Confluence are virginate, so every time you save something in Confluence page, it will be um, saved as a version. So you can compare it a bit to um, Git. And all those previous versions, you can roll them back. So if you made a change which you don't like or um, your other colleague didn't agree on, so you can just roll back. The good thing about Confluence is collaboration. So instead of having one person taking care of documentation or each person taking care of his part of the documentation, you can collaborate with them. So in Confluence, many users can edit many pages at the same time. And the good thing as well, if you're in edit mode and you would start typing some letters and changing some stuff. Other users can as well see that in real time. And that is a great, uh, actually, functionality, which I really like a lot. All right, let's talk about spaces. Spaces in Confluence, they are like, we have like two type of spaces. So we have site spaces, those you can use for product documentation, for probably documenting your processes and so on and so on. And we have personal spaces. So each um, team member or each user in Confluence um, can create his own own personal space and only he can access that space. Of course, we can change the configuration to make a personal space public, but it doesn't really make sense. So you'd use personal spaces for some sort of tests and trial. Of course, if you create a page in your personal space, you can later on move it to a site space. And like that, you can work probably privately on your documentation. And when it's ready, you can publish it to a site space by just moving the page to from one space I mean, from your personal space to your site space. Not anyone has the right in Confluence to create space. So only users with the special permission, create space permission, can create new spaces. And I would recommend to keep the um, permission really restricted. So not everyone can create new spaces because when you have a lot of spaces, probably a lot of dummy spaces, a lot of test spaces, then your Confluence will be like not really organized and that is not good um, to search for certain probably documentation, technical notes. So, to keep your confluence clean, just restrict the number of users who, who can create spaces. So within one space, users can have different access rights. So you have those who have, can only view the page, they have the only read permission, you have others who can create, edit, delete, and manage pages. You have others who can, for example, create blogs, um, and you have a lot of different yeah, uh, restrictions. Like for example, you would limit who can export certain content, um, and you, of course, you can limit who can administer your space. All right, so now you know what is a Confluence platform. So it's basically a plat web-based platform for documentation and you have um, spaces and those spaces have a landing page and under that landing page, you have a lot of pages and sub pages. And on those pages, you have text, videos, pictures, and macros to automatically generate the documentation. Well, let's look now how you can get that product. So Confluence is available for um, server, on-premise um, hosting, or you can get it on the cloud. So I'll show you how you get it on the cloud. So go to atlassian.com website and then go to products and then choose the Confluence documentation collaboration. Now click on get it free. I would recommend probably to select Jira software and Jira service management and then click on next. So notice that you have a storage limit. So you can store up to two gigabytes of, um, of data in your Confluence cloud. And if you'd like to store more or if you'd like to have more than 10 users and three agents, then you would go and buy the product. But for testing, the free version is definitely enough. So I already have an Atlassian development account and now I'm in Jira system. And if I'd like to go to, uh, to Confluence, I just have to click on this menu here on the left side and then select the Confluence. So this is the landing page. Here I see my spaces. Here I see the recent pages that I've edited. 
and probably what other users, uh, users have created or edited in the last hours. So what do we have here? We have recent. So here you see the recent pages. You can, of course, search for certain pages. And here we have spaces. And if you go view all spaces, then we'd see here, for example, space for department A, another one for department B, another one for products, um, and so on and so on. And here, because I'm the admin of the site, I can create a new space. So let's try that out. So when creating a new space, you can choose a certain blueprint or a template for a space. So by choosing the certain template, you would get certain pages automatically created and generated for you. But in this case, I'll just choose the blank space. Let's call it my first space and click on create. All right, so now we create the first space. And what do we have here? We have the landing page, which is called my first space. So that's the landing page. We have blog where we can create newsletters and we have a space settings. So what we can do here, we can edit the landing page by clicking on edit. So this content has been automatically generated by Confluence. Uh, what we can do, we can just delete it. And I would say um, this is my landing page. And what we as well can do, we can use a macro. So a macro, um, as we said, is sort of a small script which can generate um, content automatically. So go to insert and then view more, go to all and search for children. So we say show descendants and insert. So here we see nothing. We are in edit mode and we see just the macro children display with its configuration. All right, so as a reminder, we are in the edit mode of the landing page and we added some text and a macro. And that macro is called children display. Um, if you click on the macro and then go to edit, then you see all the configuration that are um, available and that you can um, set up. So let's keep it this simple and just click on publish. What we are expecting is that we see our text and then some automatically generated content, but that content is the children pages of our current page. But since we have no children pages, um, then nothing will be shown. That makes totally sense. So let's create under this My First Space um, landing page, um, another sub page and call it sub page one. And let's go back to my first space landing page. So by clicking on my first space and create another sub page two and publish. So now we are viewing the sub page two. And here we can switch between the different sub pages beneath that landing page. And um, if you would like to go to the landing page, click on overview and Notice here that we created sub pages, but we're still not seeing anything. And that's due to caching in Confluence. So by clicking on Control and then F5, you um, get from the server um, the content newly generated. Now we see that we have sub page one and sub page two. So if you want to create a sub page under sub page one, make sure you always um, first select your parent where your sub pages or sub page will be created, and then click on Create. So in this case, I would like to create under sub page one another sub page. I click on that page and then I click on create. Let's call it sub page one, one, and then publish. And let's go to overview. So you see the tree here has been correctly generated, but the macro is still getting some sort of data from cache. So by pressing Control and then F5, you get it to generate the content from, from the server. And here we see that we have a sub page. And my recommendation always when you're building a new space, please include this macro in most of your pages. And that really helps um, your users to even find content very easily. So if they have sort of a tree of all the hierarchy of um, your pages. So we went through the basic functionalities. We created a space, we created a page, and we edited it and saved it. And we use the macro functionalities. So my recommendation, um, get your own Confluence. It's for free. Um, create your test space. Create um, different pages. Um, think of different hierarchies. Um, of pages and then just uh, try the editor of Confluence. So click on any page that you have and just try all the functionalities like changing the text format, um, using uh, to the action items. So those are 
sort of tasks or to-dos that you want to assign to yourself or to other users. You can mention other users uh, using this functionality. You can add smileys, you can use tables, you can split your content in different sections um, and use the layout for that. And you have a lot of um, integration possibilities with Jira or with Trello that you can try out. So, um, there are basic scenarios which my recommendation you should learn by yourself by trying the functionalities yourself there are some advanced scenarios like using um, combined macros um, for example the page property macros and for that i'll be creating um, a couple of videos to show you how you can create advanced content using confluence editor so thank you a lot for listening and i hope i got it um, explained in an easy way. What is Confluence? How is the content Confluence being um, created and um, shown? And um, see you in the next videos.